right, hey guys, Matt the Greeter. I think we're up and running. Well, after the uh, little bit of snow we had, uh, it was not enough to use plows. We heavily salted, of course, and uh, then we had a big soaking rain, which is a dream come true. I don't mind the snow if I know it's going to be gone. So, oh, I'm able to hop back out on the old bug smasher. I need to pick up some gas. Uh, I don't think, I don't know, man. I don't think I want to do that right now. You know what I mean? I don't know. Uh, I don't like to go somewhere and shut the bike off. And then, you know, trust it to restart. I like to get a good ride in. Charge up the battery and then put her away. You know what I mean? All right. So that light would not have turned for me, but for somebody just pulled up behind me. So thank you very much. Yeah, so even though we had the soaking rain uh, and then we had plenty of um, time for the streets to dry out, it is still freezing. And um, so I am going to be cautious. You know, it washes the salt off, but it doesn't quite uh, always wash all the salt off. So you just have to be careful anyway. So what did I want to talk about today? Oh, let's get around this corner. I'm just kind of feeling things out here. Everything seems all right. All of that dark, all that dark stuff right there. Uh, there's a potential for it to be frozen, so I'm going to be extra careful. It is about, I don't know, it's it's above freezing temperature-wise, uh, but you know you can't trust uh, you can't trust your weather app <clears throat> necessarily. So that's the way it goes. So I just had uh, a bunch of homemade garlic bread. I. Uh, Someone gave me, I think, well, maybe my wife picked it up, but I uh, got, a, got a big loaf of uh, Italian bread. And, uh, you know, when I make garlic bread, you know, I do have that Italian side. So when I make garlic bread, the correct, the proper amount of garlic to use is, you know, I would say twice what most uh, people in the world would use or five times more than an American, a typical American, you know, meat and potatoes person would use. That's the acceptable amount. So right now I'm fumigating my helmet. And, uh, you know, if that guy walking the dog, if he was a vampire, he probably would have keeled right over. You know, and this is, you know, reason again, you want, you want um, security for your, for your gear. You want nobody to try on your helmet. Just eat a bunch of garlic bread and then ride around in your helmet. Hey, nobody's going to wear that helmet after you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I have to say a little bit of gratitude here because I'm getting, uh, the last few days, been getting my sense of smell and taste back. So I very much enjoyed the garlic bread. Uh, also very much enjoyed, uh, got, a, got to try some PA bark. I don't know if that's what they call it, but the bark that uh, purple on three and sneaks past Tommy G. And, uh, you know, about one tenth of it makes it out of the house. And uh, <laughs> from what I've heard. So anyway, that was wonderful. I could smell and taste. So, yeah, I am. Uh, I am very thankful. And I'm also in the wrong gear. There we go. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I don't know. I was talking to somebody uh, messaging, I should say, uh, about you know how, how do you how do you how do you like me and me how do I wash the liner of my helmet and the oh so I have got a wicked simple uh, method for doing that I, I don't wash it <laughs> that's the pro that's the problem I've really actually only been moto vlogging a little bit over a year well maybe it's a year and a half I don't really know um, it's under two years and uh, I hadn't had a full face helmet before that so so yeah an honest answer to the question or, or an accurate answer to the question is I'm not sure uh, uh, from what I've read the inner stuff in my helmets should unsnap then you just kind of wash it out and dry it up real good and uh, that's that's all I really know but knowing myself I'm afraid that if I unsnap all that interior lining and stuff I'm not going to be able to snap it back in place I can take uh, most things in the world apart I cannot get most things in the world back together again right so yeah I'll stop short of quoting Humpty Dumpty but yeah no no it comes apart it doesn't go back 
together again, it gets regifted. <laughs> Some assembly required. So, yeah, so thinking about uh, the old helmet and, uh, you know, you don't want to wear my helmet after I've been eating garlic bread. It's, you know, I'm a bass player as well. I play electric bass. And, um, you know, that's another thing. That you gotta, when, before you pick up somebody's instrument without permission, you have to consider a few things. And uh, some of us bass players really uh, don't change our bass strings. So I've been playing a little bit over 20 years. And um, I, I've only changed my strings a couple of times. The only reason I changed the strings on my four string is because I, uh, my wife painted it so it looks pretty cool. And I really wanted those DR Black Beauties on there. So I, I, I took off my silver strings and I put on the Black Beauties, which are black and they're beautiful and they look great. So the paint, you can kind of like, you, you see the paint, ooh, let's slow down here. You kind of see the paint, not get distracted by bright, shiny strings. So that's why I changed those strings. And so then I've been running those Black Beauties ever since. And on my six string bass, uh, I changed those because I went from flat wounds to round wounds. So I changed the style of string. But, you know, if you, if you picked up your, your regular run of the mill, uh, bass player. Wow, I, I'm going to take a different street back because there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff in the shadows here. So um, that you might be getting the funk of 40,000 years if you if you picked up my four string bass just before I slapped the Black Beauties on there, it had probably 15 years of grime <laughs> on those strings. You know what I'm saying? Just something to consider. Do you want to be plucking? 15 years of grime. Do you want to be pressing down on those strings and then rubbing your eyes? I don't know. I feel like that's that's pretty much a, a, a security device on my electric bass as well. I like James Jamerson, you know, the uh, the real uh, Motown, one of the Mount Rushmore, uh, you know, dwelling Motown bass players, James Jamerson never changes strings. So, I mean, you get like little green spots, like who knows what you're going to get on there, right? And uh, that's just the way it is. You get the other school of thought is, yeah, just cut the corner. The other school of thought is change them all the time. So it's kind of like no in between there. So I know some, some players uh, who play out, who gig a lot, they change their strings all the time. You know, they'll play, they'll play a few times and then on goes another set of strings. Bass springs, bass strings are expensive though. So the thought of swapping out strings constantly just does not really appeal to me um you know it's a lot of money but if you can afford it you know if you're gigging a regular gigging bass player that uh, in the band is making money you know you can afford to swap your strings out then you always have the brightest you know most responsive sound but uh but my my school of thought is like my, i play my strings until they're dead but they're not really dead they're bass strings you know, they're super thick, and so I play them until they're predictable. And now, when I pick up my bass, like, the quality hasn't tapered off. They're exactly the same as they were when I put them away 10 years ago. I, I know exactly what my bass is going to sound like, and it makes it really easy to, to get the sound I want. And uh, I don't have to really tinker around with it. Does that make sense? So if you don't want somebody stealing your stuff, here's the moral of the story. Never wash your helmet lining. And never change the strings on your bass. Yeah, you gotta change, if you're playing guitar, you have to change them. You know, you're gonna break them. They're thin, they do deteriorate, they get flat and flabby and that's no fun. But if you play bass, dude, just leave them on. Then you get a predictable sound. And then if someone's like, hey, can I play your bass? Like, yeah, yeah, well, I, you know. Yeah. Oh, the other thing on my, you know my Moto Vlogger guitar? I think I cleaned it off before I put the stickers on, but for many years, this is gross, I shouldn't even say this. All right, earmuffs. I had poison ivy really bad all over my forearms and stuff, and uh, I was playing that guitar a lot back then. And so, you know, you know, you know me, you see the tarnish on my bug smasher, like uh, machines are supposed to be used. So yeah, even though I, had, was, I was seeping with, with, you know, when you have really bad poison ivy, you're like, your body is excreting like tree sap out of those open, open sores. And so it got stuck to the, to the guitar and hardened just like tree sap. And I couldn't get it off. 
So I have, if you picked up that guitar back in the day and was strumming around on it, you know, you might absentmindedly go to, oh, rub that off with your thumb. Like, what is that? Oh, that's just seepage from my poison ivy sores. <laughs> no big deal. <coughs> hey, that's pretty disgusting. Uh, but other than that, I take at least one shower a day, if not two. <laughs> I'm clean. I wear deodorant. If I change my, my shoes, I also change my socks because you don't need to have smelly shoes. And that's one way to to kind of nip that in the bud just change your socks every time you take your shoes off and put them back on you know and uh hey that'll take up a lot of room in the laundry hey that's it what did i talk about nothing all right cleanliness is next to uh, hogliness or something all right guys i care about you and uh yeah okay thank you for the the two viewers who are still still with me i appreciate you guys all right matt the greeter care about you bye oh bye